Hi everybody, Ali from Potent Purples here. It's time for part two of my mystery robot build. Don't worry, all will be revealed in the next video, but in the meantime, I'll be releasing more and easier clues on my Twitter and Instagram accounts. I've also compiled a list of all the clues given so far, and I'll put a link to that in the description down below. If you haven't seen part one of this series, please check it out. Now, let's take a look at one of the three motors in this robot and some neat mechanics that are built around that. As with the electronics, I've been building the mechanics up one subsystem at a time. This CAD view shows you one of those mechanical subsystems. So we have a heavily geared down motor, which has a combination gear slash pulley directly attached to its motor shaft. And this interfaces with another combination gear slash pulley. And each of those has a belt, which attaches to a pulley on each side, an outer pulley on each side. So there's a, there's a reason the specific arrangement was chosen. And of course, that'll be revealed in the next video. But let's go take a look at a prototype of this. But right off the bat, you can see there's one big problem with this particular setup. And that is that when the belts are tensioned, the pulleys get pulled inward because there's nothing supporting them on this end. And for the you know, pulley slash gears in the center, that means the gears don't mesh up very well. And so everything isn't transmitted. So this calls for some design iteration because I think we can fix that by supporting it on this end. And let's take a look at that next. So with a little more design work, I added a support bar across the front, which I use to support all the pulleys from the other side. This lets me tension the belts without disrupting the gear meshings, as you can see. Let's fire this up and see it running. one direction, the other direction. As you can see, everything seems to be moving in tandem, which is great. And remember, this is the heavily geared down motor, so it's supposed to run this slow. So that all seems to be working. And let's, um, let's jump over to electronics and I'll give you an update on some small changes that I made to that. As I mentioned in the first video, one of the originally selected motor drivers won't work in this application. That's because the DRV8801 needs supplied motor power to be between 8 and 36 volts. Due to the small batteries I'm using, I will only be supplying about 4 volts. So when I hooked everything up under battery control, the motor powered by this driver didn't work at all. And that's why you test everything in stages to make troubleshooting a whole lot easier. Luckily, this is an easy fix, as Pololu has other motor drivers, which come in a small package and have a lower voltage range. I selected the DRV8838 as a replacement, and everything worked great after that. Now let's look at another one of the motors and the mechanics built around that. Here we have another prototyping setup based around one of the motors. So we have the motor right here, which is mounted on a bracket. And then directly coupled to the motor shaft is a bevel gear. And this interacts with a combination bevel and spur gear, which is all one piece. And that combo gear drives a line of spur gears. The tricky part of this is getting the design of the bevel gears correct. So let's go take a look at a prototype of that. Here is the CAD come to life. And I also have this running under RC control. So you can see that at low speeds, the gears somewhat turn, but there's a lot of skipping. And at high speeds, the bevel gears just completely lose contact. What I think is happening is that the motor is mounted on this thin flange, and I think that flange is deflecting, which causes the bevel gears to lose contact. So if we can prevent this deflection, then we should be a lot better off. So I designed in a few changes. One is I stiffened the motor bracket in the direction that the deflection is occurring. And the other is I added some support at the back of the motor to again, prevent that deflection. So with those design changes, now when I crank up the motor speed, I can go full speed and the bevel gears maintain contact nicely. So this is really awesome. And it's another huge step towards getting all the pieces in place for this robotic puzzle. So how do these two things go together? Eh, 
I'll figure it out. So now I have most of the major subsystems prototyped and working at some level, which is really exciting. Now I just need to put all the pieces together and get the full robot up and running. And that's what I hope to do in the next video, as well as revealing the movie and robot which inspired this build. But if you want to try to guess early, keep an eye out for more clues on my Twitter and Instagram accounts. If you have any guesses or questions, post them in the comments below. Please hit that subscribe button if you want to support me and see more videos like this one. I'll see you guys in the next video. Now go print something potent.